Hey guys, this is Black Scout Survival, and today I'm going to show you how to do a uh, friction fire with the bow drill method. And this is one of the easier ways of a friction fire, but it's not easy. It takes the right components, it takes the right technique, and you really need the stars to align and everything like that for it to happen. Uh, it, it's something that I wouldn't re necessarily rely on. Uh, that's why once you learn how to do this or, or at least attempt this, you'll see why you need to carry at least three ways to start fire because you don't want to have to resort to this. So it's a good thing to practice, uh, good thing to master, but don't rely on it because it's not reliable and it takes too many variables to make sure that it happens. So let's go ahead and talk about the seven main components of a fire uh, uh, bow drill kit. The first one is the bow. And this is a central item. It doesn't matter what kind of wood it is because it's, it's not creating the friction. And so it needs to be from your armpit to your wrist and needs to have a slight curvature in it. And I like, uh, you know, uh, one that's maybe a tad bigger than my thumb, but uh, some people get longer ones, some people get thicker ones. It's kind of up to your preference. Try it out and see what you like. The next thing is your cordage. Me, I like to use paracord because I have paracord on me all the time. Uh, you can use natural materials like, you know, make your own natural cordage or the easiest uh, thing that the Native Americans did was use uh, strips of deer hide. And in, in, the, in the field, that would probably be the easiest thing to do than braiding your own or wrapping your own natural cordage. But again, I always have 550 cord on me. I have it in my boot laces, have it on my wrist usually and on my keychain. So I always have it. The next thing we're gonna talk about is your spindle. Your spindle needs to be about as long as from the tip of your pinky to the tip of your thumb, kind of like the hang loose or hang tin uh, surfer symbol and it needs to be about uh, as big as your thumb I like a little bit fatter than my thumb but that's just because it creates more friction I'll talk about that in a second but on one end you'll want a point you'll shave up a point and this will go into your hand socket and it because it's pointy it won't create as much friction so you won't start a fire at the top end when you're uh, applying pressure the bottom end, that tip, I like it to be a lot fatter and, and rounder and, and uh, it creates more friction because of that. Good woods for a spindle and a hearth board is uh, cedar, poplar, willow, cottonwood, to name a few. You know, check your local areas to see what you got native to you and see what works for you. One thing you want both of those, both of these pieces, the, the fireboard and the spindle will be made out of the same piece of wood makes it a lot easier the density is uh, the same so but you know you can use you know like those woods I said but you want to check you know and, and, and just put your fingernail in it see if it makes a indention in and that typically means it's a medium density wood and will work good for a bow drill kit you don't want too soft and you want, don't want too hard although you can use hard woods I've seen it done but uh, it typically is a lot more difficult but the main thing, even outside of the wood, is to make sure you have bone dry components. That's the most important thing to a bow drill kit. Let's go on to the fireboard or hearth board. And basically, you know, I, I like mine about three quarters of an inch thick. You know, you don't ever want it to be thicker than your spindle because that will just be bad practice. But about three quarters of an inch is what I like. You want at least uh, two hands length. Longer is better because you can do multiple uh, burnouts on your fireboard, but you want at least that much because you want your foot to be able to sit on it. The burnout hole here, the, the, the divot here, you want to initially take your knife and carve in the divot, and then you want to take your spindle and burn it out so it kind of mates them two up together. Like this is a mated, mated set now burn that in and then you'll notch it with your knife and you want it to be an eighth of a piece of pie 
like a v-shape just like a piece of pizza pie you don't want it to come to the center you want it to come right before the center and you want that v-notch to go all the way through the next thing is the hand socket and for this video i'm going to use my uh, knife here i have a hand socket drilled into it but you want it to be palm sized you want it to be a hardwood or something that will not burn and that could be a uh, deer antler shell bone rock uh, any hardwood and if you use you know something that you may think that may burn you know or even hardwood or other or other items you can lubricate it the whole with like a green leaf you know stuff up in there and that oils from in there when you're running it will uh, keep it lubricated you can use pine sap you can use uh, oil off your face you can use suntan lotion you can use the vaseline off your petroleum cotton balls so there's a lot of things there that you can use the next thing is the uh, coal catcher and you can use anything but you want it to be dry for the most part you can use a piece of chip of a wood uh, you can use a leaf like i'm using and this is just a dry leaf but you don't use a green leaf because it'll suck the moisture out of it I mean, suck the heat out of it, the moisture will. But really anything that you can use, you can use cardboard, anything you find. And uh, it's not really that important of a component. You just want it to be dry. The next thing is your bird's nest. And this is something that has to be very dry and very fluffy. And you can use bark off a tree you can use weeds grass uh, a lot of different things jute twine I mean just a multitude of things but you want it to simulate a bird's nest and you want it to be dry and fluffy and you want it to be dry like I said but that's pretty much the components of the bow drill kit we have had uh, like two weeks worth of rain so it is completely soaking wet out here. Uh, I didn't really want to do it today, do this uh, bow drill kit today, because even the humidity down here is ridiculous. And I've had difficulty starting a fire with even dry components in a wet environment like this just because of humidity for our area. I'm actually kneeling on a tarp, but as you can see, I have a waterproof tarp and, and, and my knees are wet because it's so wet out here. I mean, it's like a swamp. But, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to kick this bow drill and then see if we can produce a fire. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and do this technique. You want to go ahead and set your, your fireboard up on the cold catch like I have there. You're going to take your spindle, pointy end going in, and you're going to wrap the bow around it and twist it down so that way the fat part's down. I like to bring my spindle back and see you want it to be taut so it, it kind of flips out that's when you know you, you've done it right you don't want it to be loose and you you don't want it to be able to slide around in there but I like to bring mine in just like this and, until I get ready so that way I can hold it with one hand and hold my hold my knife with the other or whatever whatever hand hold you're using Basically, you're going to put your foot, and my boots are soaking wet, so hopefully this isn't a problem, and hold it about an inch over from the hole. You're, you want your leg to be at a 90 degree angle right here. You want another 90 degree angle. You want your knee to be right behind your heel because you don't want to be bumping into your knee when you're doing the bow drill uh, technique. But let's go ahead and do this, sit it in and sit it on your handhold, giving a lot of downward pressure and just going back and forth. And one thing I forgot to mention, you want your, you want your drill to be on the outside of your bow. 
not on the inside. When you get smoke, you want to go faster for about another 60 seconds. All right, now that you got your coal, you just want to give it a little bit of air. All right. Now, a lot of people start to rush whenever they have their coal, but the thing is, is that this coal will probably burn about 10 minutes. It looks like a little amber of a cigarette lighter. Now, you'll go ahead and get your bird nest and just drop that coal right into that bird nest. You're gonna give it a little oxygen. The more smoke you get, the more you blow. Now, whenever you you got your fire here, you want to have all your other materials set up prior to you doing the bow drill. You want to have all your small twigs and all that kind of stuff. So whenever it's smoke burning like this, you can start building your fire up or put it underneath your uh, teepee you've already built. But whenever you're doing the bow drill, one thing I forgot to mention is whenever you have your knee behind other 9 degree, 9 degree. You just want to sit your shoulder right here and then lock your wrist in right here. Because if your wrist is out here, you're going to be wobbling and it won't get the good friction. But you see, I mean, the, my, my uh, bird nest I had a big bird nest and it's still burning. But we had, we had a little bit of difficulty. Normally I can do it faster than that, but this humidity out here, it's raining, I'm sweating and uh, just soaking stuff up soaking the water up but this is the bow drill friction fire and uh, hope you learned something if you have any questions just leave a comment at the bottom or email jack at blackscoutsworld.com check out more tips and tutorials at our uh, website blackscoutsworld.com if you have subscribed please subscribe and as always thanks for watching